Hi, welcome to a part for you video tutorials. This video tutorial will be shown to you by Dave. He will take you through a step-by-step -step procedure in repairing this appliance. This tutorial is on how to determine why the drum on your Hotpoint TDL30 tumble dryer is not going round. But it will also cover some other models in the Hotpoint, Creda, Indesit and Ariston range of tumble dryers as well. You may want to use a small container or two to hold the screws when you remove them because not all the screws are the same size, so make a note where the large ones fit or you could be left with small screws going into holes made by bigger ones. Switch the machine off from the power supply and remove the plug. Now remove all the screws holding the top on. There's normally at least two but you could have a few more. It depends on your make and model just how the tops come off. You may need to just push it back, or you could have to lift it first to remove it. If the belt's still in position and tight, try turning the drum by hand. If you can, then the motor is not seized up, and you can now move on to the next stage. Connect your meter to one of the plug pins, and put the other end on the appropriate connection on the terminal block on the dryer. If you get a reading, then you have continuity, so that wire's OK. Now try the other terminal on plug pin. If that's the same, it means the fuse is fine and you have power from the plug to the machine. Make sure the machine door is shut, then connect one probe from your meter to the brown wire in the terminal block and the other onto the appropriate wire on the timer. In this case, orange and white. But you'd need to follow the wire up from the door switch to the timer on your machine to know which terminal it fits on and the correct colour. I've already removed the scythe panel here so you can see the wires on the bottom of the door switch and the timer connections. If you get a reading then you have continuity through the door switch to the timer, so that's OK. Now test the blue wire from the terminal block to the timer. It's not always the live wire that's at fault, sometimes you get a break in the neutral as well. To check the motor you'll need to remove one of the side panels. On this machine the right hand side panel gives best access to the wiring. The front fixings are hidden behind the console panel and kick strip. So first remove the console panel, which is held on by these two screws. But be careful because they're right close to the point of other screws and they're difficult to hold. So a magnetic screwdriver would be really useful. A little tip, if you use an old tea towel or a piece of cloth and drape it over the timer knob, then grip it with a pair of pliers, you can pull the knob off without damaging it. Now slide the panel to the right and unlock it from the cabinet. If your machine has option switches, remove the wires. This has only one switch, so I needn't worry about labelling them. But if you have more than one switch, then pair them off and label which switch they fit on for reassembling. Remove the screws holding the top of the panel on. There is one on top and two in front on this machine. Here you can see the different size of the screws. The small one fits on the top of the panel and the larger one fits on the front. The kick strip will just pull off. Then you can remove the screw on the outer edge. Tilt the machine over, then you can undo the screws along the bottom edge. The only thing holding the panel on now is about half a dozen screws along the back edge. So remove those and the panel should come off. If you've not done so already, make sure you undo the wire holding the cables onto the panel. Use an insulated handled screwdriver and short out the terminals on the capacitor before touching it or you may get an electric shock because they can hold a charge for a short time after being disconnected from the power supply. Now disconnect the wires from the capacitor. It may have four terminals or just two as this one has. The four wires here are joined by link spade connectors. 
Now, without getting too involved in the principles of the induction motor, I'll just say there are two sets of windings in these motors, the start windings and the run windings. The capacitor gives a sharp boost to the start windings just to get the motor turning, then the run windings take over and the motor carries on running. If either of these windings become faulty then the motor won't start or won't run. The single wire not connected to the capacitor is a neutral and you should get a reading on your meter if connected to this and either of the other two motor wires. If not, you have a faulty motor. As you can see the motor on this machine is fine but this video is on how to locate a fault and change a motor. So for the sake of argument, let's say the motor is faulty and we'll continue from there. Remove the cable tie and separate the wires. You should have a link terminal connected to one of the motor wires and another connected to a timer wire. This way you just have to remember which single terminal wire goes on which link wire. If you have a camera take a photo or at least make a note. The neutral wire is blue from the timer and on this machine white from the motor but the connectors are encased so you can't confuse them. The belt will come off easily enough if you just ease it away from the motor while turning the drum. The next step is to remove the bearing cover and then undo all the screws on the heater cover. If you're doing it by hand it's a very tedious job but remember to continue segregating the screws although the ones on the cover are all the same size. All the parts used in this and other videos are available from our website at apartforyou.co.uk Just enter your model number in the search bar on the site and you'll get a list of all the parts for that machine. With the cover off you now have access to the motor fan. Use an 8mm socket or spanner and remove the three self-tapping screws holding the fan blade onto the motor shaft. Tilt the cabinet to one side and remove the three fixing screws holding the motor mounting to the machine base. Remember to hold the motor from inside when you remove the last screw. You can now remove the motor. It's still attached to the mounting frame by one screw at the fan end and two screws at the pulley end. Remember this for refitting or take a photo because the motor can be fitted back to front. The torque screws on this machine are size 25 but may differ on other machines and don't rely on the screw holes for alignment when it comes to refitting because they may not be threaded in which case you'll have to cut the threads yourself. This was the first of a two part video. The second part is on replacing the motor and reassembling the machine. When it comes to repairing this or any other machine remember you're not in a race so take your time and look at what you're doing especially regarding wiring and relevant colours or connections. Don't just pull all the wires off in one go, make sure you know where they fit. If possible, take a photo or make a diagram, because five minutes spent at the start of a job can save hours later on. We hope this video was useful to you, and remember to shop online at apartforyou.co.uk, because this is how we're able to finance making these videos. Thanks for watching.